The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch UK Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Listening to Paranormal Concept right here on Parasearch UK Radio with your host, Paul Brook. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Paranormal Concept Show. I'm your host, Paul Rook, and on tonight's show, we've got some interesting subjects for you tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're joined by Kerry Greenaway. Hello, Kerry. Hello, love. All right. Yeah, not too bad. How's your week been? I know you had a really good show the other night with the, the voices in the background. Yeah, it was, it was uh, interesting because we could all hear it while we were live. Things are being seen as well um, whilst we were... Because, like, you hear our voices, but we're on Skype so we can see each other. So we're working on trying to get that so everyone can see what we're doing as well as listening. So we're working on that. But at the moment, it's only amongst the presenters. And we could... There was interesting things happening as well, like strange lights and stuff being seen. Yeah, it was weird. I have to say, it was weird. And we've had a bit of feedback. Some people can't hear anything. Some people can hear phrases um other people can hear a voice but can't make out what's been said we're trying to work it through a i don't know this is tech so an audio splitter thing i don't know the tech term for that but we're trying to to sort of see if we can pin it type thing yeah 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 where you can split the voices down um and see if you can separate it down we're trying to do that at the moment to see if we can um pin it down but there's a couple of things i mean i've listened to it a couple of times uh not the whole thing but you know the sections um it's interesting i'm not going to say it's paranormal because like i said on the show the problem is because you're using skype as a a bandwidth yeah you don't know if you can get external interference with that we don't normally get it that's that's playing devil's advocate we don't normally get it um, but on that particular show, it, it was very strange. And uh, it, it kind of ended up a little bit like, just keep going, because what yeah. can you do? Do you know what I mean? What can you do? And that continued after the show. We went into an after-show party. This was continuing after the show. So it wasn't just through the show. But it was interesting in regards to the topic we'd chosen, which was demons. Um, and we were talking about personal experiences and and you know you know what the dark mirror is like it goes off in angles yep. and comes back to topic and um uh, so it was interesting with the topic it's interesting some of the phrases people were coming up with um in regards to their a psychologist would have a field day is all i'm saying okay and uh i can't make out any specific phrases put it that way when i've listened and i've listened a few times at the sections i can't hear any um obvious phrases i can hear something yeah it doesn't make it i i don't know i don't know what to make of it yet but i just know it was strange on the night on friday it was it was very strange and it continued after the show um with the weird happenings but coincidental i don't know coincidental i don't know yeah every time mention that that particular subject though you have something going on with Whatever happens, is yeah, you always do. Well, if you remember, like pre parasearch, me and Paul used to talk um, anyway, and every time we used the, and I'm going to go with the D word because yeah. it always used to crash the system. Do you remember that? It did. Yeah, it so used we, to boot you. And so we stopped using it. we stopped using the word because whenever me and talk, Paul talked about things like this, it would for some reason, and I never have problems with my system normally. 
And every time no, we got onto that topic, it would crash the system. Yeah, that's why I found it really interesting. Uh, I did try and listen back to what, you know, all the bits that you said that you heard. Hmm. I couldn't hear anything. It was more like, you know, when um, you're talking over a two-way radio and you both key up at the same time? Yeah. I got that interference, but I didn't hear any words in it. Yeah, so I couldn't Which... pick out any specific words, but I could hear something. Yeah. And I've got a really so, good sound system, so I, I'm, I'm, not sure what, I'm not sure what's a, what my sound system. Yeah, that's it. Everyone else goes by mobile phone, but you've got a pack of sound system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's only through circumstance, though, Paul. Let's be fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, it's a good one, anyway. <laughs> it is a good sound system. But when I listen to music or something like that, it's a it's phenomenal. But as I say, I, I listen through that system and I can't hear any specific words. But it's almost like when you're hearing someone talk, you can hear like a pss, 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 yeah. behind. And it's like, so it's like on the edge of hearing. It's it's strange. When we were live, you could hear that. But it was, yeah, there's something gone on in the back. And we don't normally get it. We don't normally get it on, on uh, the <coughs> system we use, is all I, w- I will say on that. I mean, there are sound, obvious sounds like the dog walking. You can hear the dog walking across the with his nails clicking. You can hear me rustling paper. You can hear people like just, you probably just heard me move my stool. Um, you know what I mean? And, and stuff like that. But generally, you, you kind of know what that sound is. But these were different. This was different. To the point where several times in the show, we, we actually go, did you hear that? Keep yeah. going. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it was a little strange, to say the least. So we get a new show out of it if um, if, if it does turn out to be something interesting. We get a new show out of it. If this we is what we... It, yeah, if we can pin it down, that would be freaking awesome. Yeah. It's all Brilliant. I I did, it did make me chuckle. The amount of times people use the F-bomb. It's oh, like... God. We were, like, F-bombing all over the place. That's all I can say. <laughs> Friday night is F-bomb night. Um, <laughs> and we kind of like tried throughout the show to be very good with our explicits but by the end of it it was all over the show (laughs) (laughs) oh dear but it went on till two in the morning discussion uh, the discussion went on till two in the morning believe it or not yeah I know I can believe that Mm mm-hmm the amount of times I've had that sort of discussion with you and ended up two in the morning and you walking into back of vans and things. Well, you know, it has to be done on a Friday, <laughs> surely, right? Absolutely. That's what Fridays are for. <laughs> That's what Fridays are invented for these days. <laughs> Absolutely. So, anyway, all right, changing the subject, back to the original subject of the show. We're talking Christmas movies tonight. Now... We we just spoke to this spoke to each other off air about where we're going to go with this, and I think the first question that needs to be answered <laughs> is the great Christmas movie debate: Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yeah. Why do you think though? Why why do you think it's classed as a Christmas movie? Well, it's jingle bells and it's Christmas trees and it's well, you know, it's Christmas iconography all over it, and it's about family. Right? It's about a man doing everything he can to protect and come together with his family. Yeah, but it's also about him throwing that... Um, <laughs> yeah, it's more back- detail. Throwing <laughs> <laughs> him on the roof of the building. Yeah, but that's a bad thing. <clears throat> so that's right. That's okay. It's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I see, I don't think it is. I, I, personally, I mean... For me, a Christmas movie is a movie that's to come out of Christmas and be about Christmas and the fundamentals of Christmas. Something a bit like um, the, the uh, Nativity movies. No, I like them. They're quite funny. Really? <laughs> yeah. Have you not? Have you not? You've probably not seen them. To be fair, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, name one. I might well have done. Who knows? Well, n- well there's four of them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> N- 
No, clearly I haven't seen those. No, okay. Um, well, basically, it's about a nativity play. There you go. I've covered all four films in that. <laughs> <laughs> what, they just recreated the nativity? Um, no, pretty much. The first one was a nativity play. But traditional, the, traditional, yeah, traditional nativity following, play following the Bible. The teacher, yeah, basically the teacher um, split up from his girlfriend at Christmas, and he was it's a miserable. It's not a true goddamn yeah. nativity then, if it's about a teacher, all right? About that, and then um, the girlfriend went off to Hollywood to work on a big production show, <laughs> and the teacher told um, the teacher assistant. Or someone that um, the Hollywood was going to come and watch the Nativity play, so it all escalated. So they ended up having like the, the Nativity play in like a big cathedral type thing, just so Hollywood was going to come. And yeah, it's just about that basically. And obviously, you've got the Nativity at the heart of it, but then you've still got the sideline of Willy it's won't he wrong. get back? It's a rom com. Yeah, but it's that's what Christmas is all about, I reckon. What, rom-coms? Yeah. <laughs> You're a secret a lovely rom-com stuff. lover. Uh, Nativity is absolutely hilarious. You should watch it. It's so funny. Well, I might have to now. I mean, come on. We are coming into the Christmas period. Yeah, see? And that's what it's all about, right? You've got lots of Christmas decorations up and everything. It's all set at Christmas. I haven't. You've got lots I of to say. Christmas carols and all that. So, and that's, that's what Christmas is all about, but... Not in November. I oh, don't do that. <laughs> no, right? No. Okay. It... James is in, the, is in the chat room. He says he's never seen any of the Nativity movies. Not convinced so far to change their status. They're, they're, they're good films. They are really good films. If you like a um, rom-com, James, is what I'm saying. But, no, to be fair, I mean, they're more of a, Well, they are Christmas movies more than Die Hard. No, see, I'm a die-hard fan. <laughs> yeah, Lethal Weapon. Weapon is another Christmas movie, then. Pardon? Lethal Weapon's another Christmas movie. No. That's very underrated. No. It is. It was set at Christmas, same no. as the last. No. And, and they was protecting his family, using no. your logic. No, no, no. <laughs> no, he wasn't, because he's actually... And I know this is going to sound really harsh... He was actually split from his family. You had like a family that was together and the traditional, oh, it's Christmas. And then you had like a lone wolf kind of scenario with him. And then it was, nah, it was it was just, nah. Whereas Die Hard, completely different. He's a man trying to get back with his family. It's a different scenario. It's sentimental crap which is fed to us at this time of year, and which is great. We all buy into it, but it's not realistic at all. But Die Hard, you have to take. Although, you shocked me when that was released. Wait, tell everybody when Die Hard was released. Oh, February 89. I thought February. it was like no. November time. No. I no, was it was shocked. February 1989. See, why would you put Christmas in February? Surely it should be hearts and woohoos and Christmas. You wouldn't release necessarily a Christmas movie in February, right? So I'm but that's shocked. right. It's a Christmas movie. So they obviously weren't releasing it, marketing it as a Christmas movie, but for some no. reason, the social people have decided have decided it's going to be a Christmas. Be a Christmas movie. So you know that that's a bit weird. In itself, yep. shows you how fickle the human nature but can be. Ghostbusters too. That was set at Christmas, but I yeah. wouldn't class that as a ghost. Nah, see, it's... Ghostbusters is just ghosty, right? That was. It's awesome. The two original ones, they were brilliant. Well, first one good, not the second one, not quite so good. But well, you know, it's but, yeah, the first one was absolutely brilliant. The second one was all right. <laughs> <laughs> the third one well we just won't go into that one we forget the third one and uh, the new yeah, one we... we go hell yeah girl power loving it no no <laughs> definitely not can't stand it it's too scooby doo for me 
Yeah, see, Die Hard is a favourite action movie, I have to say. It is a fave action movie and add a bit of Christmas spirit into there. That was good. Gremlins. Right? Gremlins. Yeah, Gremlins. No, I haven't seen That's Gremlins. A... Oh, laying the side down now, aren't you? I, d- well, well, I don't know why you do these these <laughs> these film shows with me. I really don't. I kind of we've worked out that I kind of do the nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties earlier, and then I kind of go bleh, or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what other Christmas movies have you seen that we can talk about then? Right, I want to talk about a wonderful surely. Life. Oh, I've not seen that one. I can't believe <laughs> you haven't seen that one. I know what it's about, though. I should hope so, right? Because it it raises, and I said this on the live, on the radio, uh, Power Search Radio group page when I did the live. It's a wonderful life. It's an interesting concept. Forget the film. The concept is interesting. Because i tell you why. Because at this time of year, it... it I kind of think it's great if you've got the perfect setup with lovely friends and family and money and, and you know, it, it's not a stressful time for you. But if you're alone or you're a split family or you're skint or, you you know, you're lonely or whatever the situation is, it's not, it highlights your inadequacies or your lackings, your perceived yeah. lackings. Um, so it can be a very... Um, double-edged sword it could be a great time or it could be a crap time and uh, christmas is the one time of the year where it's like either really great or really crap for people and i think yep. it's a wonderful life is a story of a bloke who has everything but is not happy and thinks everybody would be better off without me right yeah and an angel comes down you know and shows him what what life would be like without him yeah the effect he's had on people and the impact he's had on people's lives and what life would be without him so it's actually a really important movie in that respect so i think if you are feeling lacking or you're not good enough or you're lonely or depressed or any of those things that's kind of quite a good movie to watch yeah yeah, yeah. jimmy stewart it's one of the best Best movies of, of he, you know, Jimmy Stewart did. I agree with you, James, totally. Um, but I, I think agree. The, it's one of the best. Yeah, and I think the message in that is actually more important than some of the other movies that are out there, quite frankly, at this time of year. Yeah. Because I think it highlights the fact that your perception of what it should be is not always what it should be. And Christmas can be a very double-edged sword. You know, it's telling you you should be happy. You should have this. You should have a family. You should have, you know, two point four children and presents under the tree, and you know what I mean. You, you know, and all these things that you should do to make it the perfect family Christmas and stuff like that. And it's not like that these days. You know, life has changed for a lot of people, and it's not yeah. as uh, coherent socially as it used to be. And I think that that movie in itself is like highlights that you are important no matter what your situation yeah. is no matter how you feel if you if you erased yourself from the human race you know it past present future if you erased yourself this is this is actually what you're erasing it's not just um your it, it, it's a pro, you know life is a progression and it's not just about being with family it's about the impact you've had on other people's lives and I think people underestimate their own impact on other people's lives. You know what exactly. I mean? And I think that movie in itself shows that. And yes, okay, at the end he's happy as Larry and, you know, the guy gets his wings, can't remember his name, but the angel gets his wings and he goes home and says, it's a wonderful life and he's fully embracing and, you know, wakes up and sees how amazing he is and his family is and his life is. And, um, yeah, all right, so the end is a bit lovely lovely dovey but i think we would all do that i think if we were actually shown what life would be like without us then can you can you imagine it though if you if that actually happened to someone and nothing had changed <laughs> like, okay 
And you can imagine in the angel going, really, you want me to go and show what? No, because there's nothing. I don't think anybody hasn't got an impact. I don't think no, that's yeah. true. I don't think that's true. I think, well, and also, got... moving on to Scrooge, I think in that movie, yes, all right, the ghost of past, present and future comes down and shows Scrooge's, you know, error of his ways and he changes and blah, blah, right? But I think in that movie, it shows the shows the way that you do impact without even realising it. Yeah. Your actions will always have an impact, even if you don't recognise that, you know. Um, and if you're good and kind and, you know, generally have a good heart, then you will have a positive impact. Even if that's like with somebody from 20 years ago might sit there and you would have had an impact. You know, I don't think yeah. anybody has no impact. I don't believe that for a minute. No, exactly. I mean, yeah, you you can see that. I mean, if if you go back into your ancestry and you, you can see what sort of impact your ancestors had. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, I don't know, they might have been famous discoverers or whatnot, but then it could all, lead, or it does all lead down to you. And so you can see that sort of impact. Yeah. And that's an interesting concept though, isn't it? It is. Because we, 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 you know, we talk about um, more on the spirit dimension than um, on the paranormal field. But how in how lives inter intertwine and how you can have an impact on somebody without even realizing. And then you might not be in their life for a while. You know, you might just like pass in and out of their life, but you don't know the impact you've had. You know, um, some random and conversations. Again... You, you get that again. I mean, I, I do in personally. Um, I tend to arrive in people's lives when they need that extra boost, um, bit of help and advice and all that sort of thing. And I do, I, I talk, sort of go into people's lives and then come out of it when I finish, like when they're they're up and running again. Um, so yeah, I know, I know that I've had an impact on people's lives. Exactly. So just don't sure. discount that. Yeah. And think you're so say for example you hit a depressive time in your life and it was oh I don't serve any purpose I'm not um you know I'm not worthy of anything and you know you go down that depressive route but in reality that's not a true perception because the lives you've touched over the years I mean I didn't know you from Adam but you've been a huge yeah. support in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, no. <laughs> Huge. When I'm drunk, walking into bands and stuff, it's been awesome. Yeah. But no, no, beyond that, you know what I mean? And and like, we... even, even if we didn't talk or even if we didn't connect in some way in the future, that, mm. your, that impact would never be forgotten. It would always be, yeah. oh, gee, oh, Paul, he was awesome. He, you know, he picked me up at my lowest. And I remember a conversation I had where I literally phoned him up and said, it's done. And... The conversation that followed was just like, I just cried with gratefulness. Do you know what I mean? And stuff like yeah. that. Do you know what I mean? Those moments of impact, you don't ever discount those because we've all had those with various people, whether they're in our lives or not now. You know, Absolutely. we've all, we've all had those. The impact with that van. Never. Exactly. As James <laughs> put, it's a complex tapestry of interwoven lives. Yeah, indeed. And I, I agree I, with that. I think the minute you start discounting that impact you have on others is the point where you start giving up on yourself and you should never give up on yourself. No. And I think that's, this is what movies like It's a Wonderful Life and Scrooge are quite, kind of trying to say. is It's never too late to change. It's never too late to see the impact you have on others. And Christmas kind of, it's, it's kind of highlights that for people. Do you know what I mean? Because it can be, like I said, the worst time or the best time. Yep, indeed. And I, I think it sends a message to all the paranormal investigators out there to be miserable gits at Christmas. Because you're <laughs> by three ghosts. I think, uh, I think the problem <laughs> in the paranormal field is that it's too cold and everybody's too involved with their social family and, and you can't yeah. really investigate over um, this period of time. I mean, people do, but it's just so cold, you know. It is. Um, in a it's lot of locations. Like it's like, no, it's your mist from the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and they get a bit of, like, field withdrawal symptoms, I think, yeah. is, the, is the key. 
um, with the paranormal investigation world. But, you know. I'll I'll investigate my house for the next few months, I think. Well, this is where we research. This is where you sit down and you start researching and catching up on all the footage that you've captured on your investigations. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But I think maybe there's a little bit of that. Plus also, I mean... I don't know about you, but this summer was phenomenal, right? Yep. Heat wise. And it's a lot of outdoor <laughs> socialising, um, family gatherings, barbecues. You know, I, I think I did more of that this year than I've ever done because it was so hot. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh my God. You're like, don't just come around and we have a drink. You know what I mean? I was a barbecue. Done. Yeah. And then we get to this time and everybody starts to hibernate. Oh, don't you just love to hibernate? Mm hmm. Thank you. <laughs> hibernate rather than hermanate. Hermanate, hibernate. <laughs> hibernate sounds good about now. Either I'll or. see you in four months' time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think there's like, it is a bit down, a bit of a down. I think that's why Christmas is where it is, really, to give you a bit of a lift in the dark days, because we are hitting the dark days now. Um, yeah. And. Mental health issues and anxieties and stuff like that are peak at this kind of time of year. A lot of it is media driven, like marketing and consumerism um, driven. You should have this, you should have that. If you haven't got it, you're not good enough. You know. Turns off the second I see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's normally in the middle of November. Yeah. Yeah, I was joking but... with somebody the other day and said, don't even think about going on dating sites until about the 15th of February. <laughs> 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 the fresh blood will be hitting on the 15th of February. But it's true. It's so true. No one's going to dump anybody at this time of year. It's too close to Christmas. Then after Christmas, you're <laughs> thinking Valentine's Day. I know it's a very cynical way of thinking, everybody. I just like to add that. Um, and then... <laughs> But then if they don't treat you right on Valentine's Day, yeah, it's no other occasion until eh, yeah. maybe maybe Easter, but that's not really a big deal, right? So just dump them. So, yeah, 15th of February is the best time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Christmas films, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what other ones have you seen then we can discuss? And they can't be it, just two. Oh, I have to say, yeah, I'm well, on too, because it'll be a variation of Scrooge from, like, the old no. Albert Finney to Bill Murray must, is the best. I must admit. Huh? I'll, I'll take the original one. But I'm sure it's the, Albert Finney, isn't it? I don't know. But it was a black and white film. My dad introduced it to me. But, no, I, I prefer that, that version. That's the best. I but then agree. you, you, you but Bill, then I Bill have Murray's. To, I was going to say, I have, I do love Bill Murray. Yeah, but he introduces the humour into it, doesn't he? Well, hell although, yeah. although Blackadder's Christmas Carol was good. I will bet you've not seen that either. Yes, I have seen Blackadder Christmas Carol. <laughs> it is. Blackadder, <laughs> at the end of the day. I mean, who doesn't love a bit of Blackadder, right? Yeah, exactly. That's where I learned most of my history from. <laughs> go, go be done, <laughs> it? Oh, dear. Do some, like, who cut off that, uh, was it, um, oh, what king was it in the first one? Mine's gone blank now. The, the king had got his head cut off. At the Battle of Bosworth Field. What the hell? What? And, uh, it was, it, there, there was a battle in England of Boswell Hill or Boswell Field. Right. And the king Bosworth. killed. Was it Bosworth? Yep. Battle of Bosworth. And the king was killed. And I can't remember what king it was. Um, but Edmund Blackadder did it. I'm and he blamed to... Henry Tudor. I'm trying to think. I don't know the Battle of Bosworth. Yeah, I don't yeah there's Battle that of Bosworth. It was the very first one. But there was actually a Battle of Bosworth and the king was killed. And it wasn't Edward. That's got to be Henry then, isn't Richard. it? Oh, I it don't was... know. Because 
it was Henry Tudor come after him, I think. No, that was... Uh, oh, so, God, here we go. We're trying to, like, remember the Blackadder. Um, so... Just trying to remember... <laughs> Taking our history from Blackadder, everybody. Do you like that? You, I mean, come on. It's almost like, that's, that's terrible. <laughs> Christmas films and we're trying to work out, like, history from Blackadder. <laughs> for, the, for the episodes, they did actually take proper scenes from history. So oh, they made yeah. it. Good, Richard. But, it was King Richard. Yeah. I've just Googled it. Okay, there you go. King Richard uh, III. Yeah. <laughs> so he got his head cut off. I really yeah. had to Google that, everybody. That was a quick Google there, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think they covered great periods of history um, in Blackadder. I love Blackadder. I, I can't deny it. I thought the World War One when they covered World War One, yeah. they did it incredibly well. Um, and the end, considering the end, it was a comedy series, they wrote that incredibly um, well, and people were worried, weren't they? If you remember rightly, they were. Um, about that. But in that, I think it's worth noting that uh, when the guns went silent on Christmas Day, and they actually had a game of football and they shared cigarettes, and the next day they went yep. back to bombing the hell out of each other. I think that's incredibly poignant. And I think it shows how the impact of Christmas can have on people, um, regardless of race, um, culture. Thanks, James. <laughs> I didn't know. While we're laughing away, I'm quickly Googling. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. I don't know. These kitchen studio pop-up podcasts that we've been criticised for recently, I don't know. But, um, no, I think... With things like Scrooge or, you know, Christmas Carol or or, um, It's a Wonderful Life or Blackadder, you know, whatever you're watching um, over the Christmas period, I think it does kind of remind you of the important things in life, that it's not about consumerism and whether or not you've got the best gadget or, um, you know, the presents you've got. It's about the connection you have with people. Yeah. So I think that's what makes a good good Christmas movie, you've got the whole connection thing going on and then you've also got like the underlying message to be good or do you know what I mean? And stuff like that. Yeah. But th- there's not many new Christmas movies coming out. I mean I I looked on Netflix and it's all this teen sort of rubbish going on. Yeah. And it's like they I mean you've got the Christmas Chronicles. That that was okay. But then like the main character was Santa in it. Um, you know, you, you, that sort of kids' Christmas movie, they're, they're good family entertainment. And I think that's what Christmas is all about, really. Because, again, you know, you've got the, the, the Christmas message in there, and then you've also got the time you're actually spending with your family watching it. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, there is. Um, I'm a split family. I'm, it's just me and the boys. I'm a single mum. Um, with my boys and one of the things that hit home the hardest at this time of year was that I'm not part of that new you know like the 2.4 children a dog and a car in the garage that stereotypical life um really hit home around the Christmas time I really struggled um when I first this was a long time ago now um when I first split from my part my husband and it took me quite a few years to get my head around the fact that actually it's got nothing to do with that. It's about the time you spend with the people you love. Now, I'm incredibly blessed um, in my life. I've got great kids, great family, like mum, dad, sister, um, friends. I've got amazing friends. It doesn't matter that I haven't got the partner and the love. Yeah, it is a bit poignant. You know, you do kind of go, why not me? But at the end of the day... I don't feel like I'm lacking because of that. But then I don't buy into media. I don't buy into marketing. And I think you have to sort of like, in this day and age, it's a very contrived perception of what should be, which it isn't. Everybody's different. Everybody has a different setup in their life. And, you know, look at look around you. I'm still loved. Just because I haven't got a partner to hold me at night doesn't make me any different to anybody else. Doesn't make me lacking in any way. You want to get one of those hug pillows. 
Mate, I've got one. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I've got a dog. It kind of makes up uh, in the bed, right? A yeah. massive dog. Um, but, you know, I just think you have to sort of like see past the the commercialism and the marketing feeding. I mean, I have to say one of my favourite Christmas films, which is a complete sobfest, um, sobfest rom-com, is Love Actually. I love that film because I think it shows that love can happen in so many different ways, in so many different circumstances. And, uh, you know, it's not all about man meets woman, falls in love. It's all, you know, roses at Christmas and stuff like that. I think that film actually shows how it can come in so many different ways and in so many different um, circumstances. I just love it. I mean, God, every year it's like completely, complete dripping with sentiment, sentimentalism, if that's a word. I'm going to make words up as we go through this show, I'm sure. But yeah, I well, love that film. I love it. I think it's awesome. Well, someone's got to love it, I suppose. Otherwise, they wouldn't have released it. <laughs> it's human it, it, it didn't escape and instead of released. But It's great. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> And like, see, you've got Bill Nye in that film, who like is just cracking. <laughs> yeah, this is the best bit of it. I mean, you've got no. a lot of other actors that are like totally yummy. It's got nothing to do with it, right? But it's just brilliant, and it shows that love can happen in so many different ways when you least expect it, right? If you say so. I know you don't buy into that, but I see rom com trash. Love, love a bit of rom com. But then I have to say, this, this is one thing me and you will never ever agree on. I loved the Twilight movies. Ugh. Yeah, see, right? That's the, that, that's the that's the response you get. Oh God! Oh my God! Really? Why? Why the hell did you like that? I loved that. I love those movies. And uh, Pride and Prejudice like, Zombies. Really. Come on now, what's not to love about that? Big. <laughs> <laughs> Shows the difference we have in movie tastes, everybody. Yeah, some we films. There's um, another one on um, Netflix that I was watching: um, Cockneys versus Zombies. Oh, I'm gonna have to check that, that was, out. It was so. <laughs> We've come off Christmas movies, everybody. We're now on zombie movies. Well, no, to be fair, I was looking for Christmas movies at the time and thought, oh, that looks good. <laughs> I got sidetracked down a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. um, so my, my brother, his favourite Christmas movie is Santa Claus the movie. Oh, I think really? earn that and destroy the film totally, just get rid of it. I thought it was the worst film ever. There's a lot of modern films I would get rid of completely, to be fair. Yeah, a lot I mean, of the modern Christmas films that get rolled out at Christmas can't stand, right? Yeah, one of, the, yeah. one of the big ones is the Polar Express. Get rid of it, please. I so, say I don't know about that one actually. I'm, I'm not that I've actually seen it, but I don't know. I'd, maybe one day I'll get to see it. But no, I do agree with you that some of the new Christmas movies. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're struggling for storylines. I mean, one of the newer ones, um, there's there's one about um, a princess trades places with a common girl, prince commoner, the, like the prince and the pauper. Yeah, that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm not really. You can't think of anything more original. But for these, Christmas are, these are enduring Christmas tales, aren't they? The Prince and the Pauper. Let's have a look at that one, right? That, you know, traditional uh, Prince and a Pauper swap places and the Pauper, you know, gets used to the life of, you know, what's the word? Um, gets used to the life of luxury, I suppose. And luxury. Then the pau- and the Prince actually goes into the life of being a Pauper and, you know... Um, recognises the troubles that people have on the street. And, you know, it's how they cope with that. But it's like, again, 
it's about swapping places, swapping places to people. And the legend, or the legend, the, the story behind that is you can't judge somebody until you've walked in their shoes. Yeah. But then that's not a Christmassy type of message, is it? I mean, Elf. That oh. That's just Christmas, all, everything to Christmas do with Christmas, isn't it, really? And, and the Santa Claus, have you seen that one? Probably. They've become a lost in a mist of children movies. These are children movies that I don't buy into. I don't like them. It's crap. No. Oh, no, see, that's, again, that's what Christmas is all about, watching crap on TV. I'll tell you one film I really don't like. Go on. That's a Christmas movie. It's put out there every bloody year, and it's like, ooh, it's got to be watched. Um, is actually The Wizard of Oz. Okay. I don't like that movie. I don't like the spin-offs. Yeah. I don't like the original. I think her voice is awesome. Um, the You know, her singing... Is great. Yeah. And I'm struggling to remember her bloody name. Minelli. Not Liza. Oh, God, what's her bloody name? <laughs> I don't know. You've got to think on that, can't you? Oh, God, she's so I'm... famous. Not Liza. That's... That was her daughter. Um... To me, it's not a Christmas movie. Oh, yeah, but it's oh, every year. It's I don't mean to say it's a Christmas movie. I mean, James Bond is on. Christmas. Judy. Sorry, what? Judy Garland. That was who it Judy, was. Judy Garland, yeah. Yes, thank you. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Brain fart. That shows you how much she watches. That shows you how much Jake Daniels I've had tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, it's Judy. Right, Where's so, that? <laughs> there's yours. <laughs> In Mark's yeah. back pocket. So, anyway... um. Right, okay, so you want to distill it down to what makes a Christmas movie. So what you want to do, let, let's make our own Christmas movie here and now. Okay. Santa Claus has got to be in it. Obvs, right. <laughs> There's got to be a certain amount of live, right? A bit sickening, but we've got to... Okay, so the, the little kid loves his toys that he wants for Christmas. There you go. But it doesn't need, necessarily... So appreciates the fact if he doesn't get, so he's grateful. So gratitude has got to come into it. Yep. Um, what else could we have in our movie? Elf on the Shelf seems to be the thing these days. Yeah, it does actually. <laughs> they could make a movie of Elf on the Shelf. I think that uh, uh, the 12 Days of Christmas with Elf on the Shelf. Yeah. And then, and then on the last night, obviously, Santa Claus comes down and says, Elf, you've done really well. Rather than an elf that goes to bloody the North Pole to help him make toys or something stupid like that. Um, so, yeah, maybe we should do it, elf on the shelf. And then him bemoaning his lot of various positions he's been put in. Yeah, that that's was like quite a funny. cross between, like, Toy Story and Santa Claus Story. But where are you going to put the nativity into that? Because that's important, because every every film has got to have a bit of religion in there, surely. Okay, well, maybe, maybe <laughs> Jesus the, pops down in those words. Shelf be could be the baby Jesus's um, doll, toy doll. There you go. Really? Be like Chucky, a good one. <laughs> oh, mate, producers need to be listening to this crap. <laughs> We have to, it, obviously it has to take place with lots of snow, right? What? Oh, yeah, crime, drama, horror, action. Just add snow, in boom, UK, Christmas movie. In the UK, it's <laughs> fair to have snow at Christmas, and it was actually Charles Dickens who introduced that idea to us. Really? Yep, we, we don't really have a white Christmas. No. It was only Scrooge, really, that sort of kicked it off. Or was it? Yeah. So if we went back in the um, geographical records at, at the the you know centre that records all the snowfall and stuff, I can't remember the name of it right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you will be able to say it sober anyway. Would you? <laughs> would Miss there... your, would your place. Yeah, one of those places, <laughs> right? We would be able to see if that's true or not, or whether or not that's just a, like, it, 
No, it, it was Emerald very rare for us. It was very rare to, uh, for us to have a white Christmas, but didn't and it the was that. Used to freeze. Yeah, in the winter. Well, this is winter. Yeah, but it might not have stayed around for Christmas. No, but I wonder if that's a more modern thing. So if you went back to the 16th, 17th, like 15th century, it was actually snowing at Christmas around this time of year. It would be interesting to, to see from a, a, a you know... I'll, I'll ask you to research that one and we can come up with that next week. Scientific perspective, whether or not it that's... did. But you're right, Charles Dickens did kind of like bring the snow factor in. But so did... Um, oh, God... Who else did that? There was another thing I was thinking that's gone out of my brain cell. Snow <laughs> at Christmas. Snow at Christmas. Who was it? Oh, anyway, doesn't matter. But um, it will come to me in a minute and I'll go, oh, it was to do with snow at Christmas. Every every show. Oh, this is going horribly wrong tonight. Um... <laughs> oh, no, it's just funny listening to you rattling on. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> So my brain works at times. It's gone into brain fart mode. Um, Snow at Christmas, yeah. Interesting concept. I don't remember Snow at Christmas, do you? Um, A couple of times it's been snowing. I've actually been out in the snow at Christmas Eve. Have you? Yeah, and it was probably about six, seven years ago. I was working at Lakeside in the ambulance and it was snowing. And it was on Christmas Eve. And then it stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Not like the movies where it's like lovely all day and then like no. when they come together at the end so they go outside and the snow starts to fall drifting from the sky and it's just perfect. A perfect um, placement of snow. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe once it's probably done that, but I can't remember when. I'm no, sure I it was I don't remember was one. Christmas. So, um... But it would have been quite a while because I've forgotten. Hmm. Let's just have a quick look at that, shall we? Carry on talking. Go for it. <laughs> Christmas movie is at Christmas. Right, Paul, what's your favourite Christmas movie? Uh, my favourite Christmas movie, Krampus. Oh, God, really? Yeah. All the naughty kids get taken away by the Krampus. Actually, no, to be fair, it's the 5th of December. It's a German... <laughs> it's not Christmas at all. <laughs> oh, no, it is the anti Santa. So all the naughty children get taken away, and um, they basically go and live in hell. I think I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a German folklore, the Krampus, and yeah, they made a movie of it a couple of years ago. That was really good. I right. enjoyed that. So I've just done a quick Google. Okay. And the Met Office says snow has fallen somewhere in the UK on Christmas Day 38 times in the last 54 years. That's awesome. But it doesn't say that it's settled, though, does it? Well, uh, what are you expecting? Five feet of snow? Uh, yes, quite frankly. Absolutely. In 2015, this was technically... A white Christmas, which that and they, might be class, well they class white Christmas basically as, um, yeah, it might be what you're remembering, where at least 10% of the UK, which isn't a lot really, right, mm. had snow-laden driveways. Okay, well, there you go then. That's probably what I was remembering. Okay, but this year they're not reckoning it's going to be a white Christmas, I'd just like to say. And Except white, that, talking of Facebook. white Christmas... That's where my brain was going with snow, where the iconic image of Bing and his birds singing around birds. <laughs> Sorry for the women out there. That's very bad of me. Um, you know, the you know, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. You know, and it's like six foot of snow because they got snowed into a snow lodge. Funny that. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a quite iconic image, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh, but I, let's I have think... a look at the history of British winters while we're here. Carry on. You do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my, my, I don't know, my favourite Christmas movie, there's so many to choose from. Actually, the ones I do like is the Santa Claus. 
because Santa fell off the roof. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... In 1648 to 1649, the Thames froze over. Don't yep. say when, it just says it froze over. And then in 1657 to 1658, it began a period of long line snow, lasting from December through until March. Okay, so what was that? 16 what? 57 to 58 or 48 to 49. Okay, so, so, when only... the, so when did Dickens had... write A Christmas Carol? What? I don't know. I'll burn around then. Well, I'm just Googling this. <laughs> oh, sorry, everybody. This is how research happens. In 1843. <laughs> exactly. So let's have a look at 1843. So his image of a frozen Thames and snow at Christmas was kind of set in from that time, I would have said, because that's sort of what people got all. Oh, do you remember those years, years back? 1843. In 1840 to 1841, we had a severe winter. Um, and in 1838, so he would have actually remembered deep snow, which is five to six inches, that's what they class as deep snow, yeah. throughout his life before, just before he wrote A Christmas Carol. So everybody's saying, oh, he invented it. He actually drew on that from personal experience and memory. I don't, so, I don't say he invented it, I just said that he, he spread the idea. Yeah, but it's we... hardly spreading the idea when it was already in place anyway, because in 1826, again, there was ice on the Thames. I've never seen ice on the Thames in my whole 21 Didn't it... years. Didn't <laughs> Yeah. Was it last year or the year before? No, there was never ice on the Thames. No, I was sure it started to freeze over. A couple no. of years back, we had a really bad freeze spell. Or, no. We did, because we went down. I went to South End and it was all slushy in the sea. No. Yeah, it was. Right. You need I mean, to get out. Nineteen nineties. Let's have a look. Bear with. Right, two thousand. So that it would have been last it, year, right? No, two thousand. Yeah. Well, it don't go it up did to that. Completely it completely freeze over, but it yeah. started to. Yeah. So it started to freeze over. Well, to be fair, this site only goes up to two thousand and eleven. What so, a cop-out. Well, I can't help the sights I'm looking at. Jeepers. <laughs> they haven't updated it for a few years, have they? But no, it was so cold that even the sea started to freeze over. No. That's... I live on the island in the Thames and we never saw ice on the Thames. Well, no, it, it, it did. It turned it all sort of slushy. There is a really I... famous painting, isn't there, of them having a fair on the ice on the Thames. Yeah, Dr. Who covered it as well. And that was in the 1600s, everybody. That's not been any other time other than that. But somebody decided to draw a painting of it and got set in this mindset that we should have deep snow. Yeah. In 1620 to 21, the Frost Fair was held on the Thames. 1635, the Thames froze over. We've come off films completely, if you noticed. We're now on weather. We're now on weather, everybody. (laughs) Um, oh, in 1638, tornadoes were reported in the southwest. Anyway, I'm moving off this site because I'd be far too. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so <attractive. laughs> okay, so what film? I oh, know you, you've done your favourite one, didn't you? Yeah, it's Scrooge, and it's a wonderful life. Yeah. They're my two. Like, they're, but no, to be fair, they're, they're not your favourites. They're the ones you've just only seen. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to spit my drink out there. Yeah. Is it, okay, right. What about in the chat room? What's everyone else's favourite Christmas movie? Let's talk about some of those. Right, okay. Yeah. So, um, James is saying how well we're doing considering the situation. Um, what, you're in your drunk? I'm not drunk. <laughs> Merry. We'll go with Merry. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. How about that one? Oh, that was good. I enjoyed that one. But they've done so many films, though. I think they just ruined it. Well, they went too far. Yeah, they just done too many films. and I mean, they've done The Vacation, then European's Vacation. Really? I right. suppose they had to go do 
It's vacation, it's, I suppose. It's a little, yeah, but it's a little like the Star Wars movies. They've kind of done them, right? Home Alone. The Home Alone movies. They're Christmas the movies. When I first saw the first one, that was absolutely hilarious. After that, it's just the same old stuff, isn't it? It's like four of them as well. Yeah, I've got the box set for the kids. To taught them yeah, all, the, so all the best moves, just, everybody. The first one is definitely the best. That was hilarious. But I think it was because it was so different, though. And a kid overcoming, um, like, you know, a kid being confident, being left by his family. I mean, God, that's quite devastating, really, isn't it? When you think about that concept. Oh, my family forgot me. Um, but, hey, pizza. And, and oh, I mean, I'm going to get broken I into. I know. I've got plenty of toys and spiders that I can use. I mean, you know, yeah. I, yeah, I just thought it was funny when the, the, I think they were going up the stairs and he's got along that, that long tube and he throws that down and they duck. <sighs> and then he throws a paint pot down or something and it hits them. Smack the face, face yeah. And then as they fly back, they get the next one. The it's first kind one of they slapstick, come. isn't it? The it is. Home Alones. You don't get too many of that anymore either. What, slapstick? Kiss, kiss, bang, bang, keep, uh, James keeps going on about. I've, n- I've never even heard of that movie. Kiss, kiss, bang, no. bang. No, I can't have heard of that one. My pen. Sorry. Um, oh, I'm going to have to Google that now. Kiss, kiss, bang, bang. What's that about? <laughs> See, you come on the show, we do research whilst we're live. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> God, please, Alan Cooper, don't listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's got listen. Robbie Downey Jr. in it. Two bit. Oh, can... hang on, I've run onto the different site. Oh God, I'm going to have to download that one or something. But yeah, going back to um, Home Alone, the, the first one was good, really good. The second one was all right. He, he was lost in New York in that one, wasn't he? And uh, yeah, with the bird, that was with okay. the birds. Yeah, and he helped the old man in the shop, didn't he? Yeah, but yeah, he's my uh, dad's credit card to sign into a hotel, if I remember rightly. It's the one, yeah. yeah. James, I've got a little question, James. How is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang a Christmas movie? Stumble was into an audition for a mystery film whilst on the run from cops winning the part. He lands in Hollywood where he's flung into tangled murderous conspiracy with his childhood sweetheart. It sounds like a great movie, but... Maybe it's one of those like die-hard movies that is it a Christmas <laughs> movie? <or not? laughs> Possibly. Yeah, right. that, that's well, maybe what it is. Joe has said Jack Frost. Now I put a post up the other day asking for like a, a cry fest movie, and I yep. believe this is one of the movies that she put up was Jack Frost. What's sad about okay. Jack Frost? I don't know. He's in Santa Claus. Yeah. Oh, the film that Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is just set at Christmas, a bit like the Die Hard movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. that's probably one. All right, we'll yeah. give you that, James. Yeah. Actually, no, we won't. It's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then Joe's just come just... back with The Only Fools and Halls special. We're completely off paranormal films now, aren't we? We're just talking about normal films. Christmas, or it's was paranormal. the Christmas one that I re- I'm recalling, was that the Batman and Robin special? Was that a Christmas one? Because um, that was freaking hilarious. I don't, they've done quite a few Christmas specials, to be fair. Well, the Batman and Robin preferred, was like the best. I preferred, I preferred the Christmas special they'd done um, when their dad turned up for Christmas. That was funny. Uh, that he, he convinced um, convinced them that they weren't brother like they were half brothers and not proper brothers by um, having a blood test because he he said that he weren't well and then they need to have a blood test. Yeah, and yeah, um, he sad, changed actually. his arm to try and split them up. Oh, I was just it, it was funny. I have to say the best writers of any comedy around Christmas is somebody who takes such a um, a, a poignant um, situation like that because that's not a good situation is it when someone comes into your life and says actually you're not brothers you're like 
you know, you take a blood test and that's quite horrible really, isn't it? But actually manages to spin it on a comedy factor. Yeah, I, I, yeah, no, I do agree with you there, absolutely. It, it, it does take oh. good vibes. Sorry, Ross. I've just seen a synopsis of Jack Frost. Oh, Sorry. okay. It's like me, so, Michael Keaton. Has no time for his son and then dies, but comes back as a snowman. Woohoo! And wants to spend time. I kind of want to go, I'm walking in the air. <laughs> 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 Right. Sorry, uh, Joe. Yeah. Sorry, Joe. Sorry. Well, on, on that note, I think we've come to the end of the show. No, let's keep going, right? Because this is funny. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Completely unprofessional tonight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, next week we're doing um, Christmas oh. traditions, are we not? Are we not? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, everybody. Yes. Christmas traditions. I'll be a lot more sober <laughs> and and researched. I feel. Yes. Yes, I think you will be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being told surreptitiously by t- boss. I feel. Um, yes. Next week we're doing Christmas traditions, which I believe is our last show of the year on the concept yes. show. Yes, it is. Um, but we do have a special show. What day is it? The twenty third. Sunday, the twenty third is our last show on. Pa- oh, hello. Oh, sorry, um, <laughs> fell off the chair. Um, is twenty third is our Christmas special. Christmas party special. Mm-hmm. So you you're gonna have all presenters on air live. I hope so. Yeah. May if I if by then. <laughs> mayhem is all I'm going with that one. Drunken mayhem on that show. Looking back at everything that's happened over the last year on Parasearch Radio and having some good memories and plenty of laughs, I'm sure. And, uh, yeah, right? I was probably going to be on the top of the list. My show, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in about the good laugh bit, but okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> And how I'm so hard done by behind the scenes, I think it's going to go. That's the sad part of Christmas. So get your hankies out. I always get emotional on the last show of the year. (laughs) Oh, I don't. It's like, yay! Free time for about a week. Everybody else is like, woohoo, two weeks off. I'm like, oh, it's been such an amazing year. Everybody, I love everybody. I love you all. And then, I'm sorry. Anyway, so Christmas tra- Christmas traditions yep. is um, next week on the Paranormal Concept Show. So uh, have a listen next week. Don't forget, everybody, tune in tomorrow night. Haunted History is Penny, Sally House. She's talking to Apex Paranormal. Um, and then we're off until Sunday where I have the uh, I have Melissa Brown. Uh, Melissa Bryan, even, in the studio. Oh, God. Melissa Bryan in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to go down well, isn't it? Well, it will go down well because she's awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, on that note, thank you everyone for joining us in the chat room. Oh, <laughs> he's going to go to bed now. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm so sorry. And we shall see you all again next week. So goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.